Key, key. Do you love me? <laughs> no, don't start Do it. <laughs> hey, welcome to Big Area Live. We're back. Um, sorry, it took me a little while to start tonight's show. I had to go grab a blue waffle. I mean, I mean a uh, <laughs> blueberry waffle. Not to be considered. <laughs> I see. I told you I had a joke coming. But uh, anyway, welcome everybody. Um, I also want to thank our uh, sponsors, Eggleston Munitions, Applied Arsenal Finishes and Gunworks, uh, the range at 355, and Smith of Precision. Um, go check all them out. Uh, great companies. Uh, a lot of great products. Um, so I'll introduce everybody tonight real quick. For those of you who haven't been watching the show because we haven't been on the past couple weeks, um, we got Kent from Green Mountain Defense in the house with us. Hey, Kent. Welcome. Hi. <laughs> we got Corey. Kanishiwa. Kanishiwa. And we got our buddy Brandon, who's also our web guru guy. Welcome, welcome. So um start out with uh, I got one topic I'll get into in a little while here. Um, but first topic I'm just gonna get on. I just did a video on this, uh, just a quick unboxing video. I'm I'm a- anxious to get out to the range and test it out. I was looking at, you know, different site options um, to go with something inexpensive and this being a 22 um i didn't feel i had to get a real high-end optic at this point and cost factor i wanted something inexpensive so i found these ade or aid i don't know how they how they call it um optics uh and again this has been safety check so i'm not pointing a loaded you know pistol at myself or anything one thing i don't like too is that the big knob on the side of this mount they should do something different with that but overall styling points it looks pretty nice um it's functional and I'll see if I can turn it on. I don't know if I'll be able to see the red dot on the screen or not. But I have to get it out to the range and actually see if I can get it dialed in. Um, it's got five brightness settings. This is the brightest one. I don't know if you'll be able to see it on the camera or not. Oh, there we go. You can kind of see it. That dot looks much bigger than it is just because of the optical illusion that you get off the different lenses with the camera on this and that. But now, did you say that that was a, a high point optic? It's kind of like that. It's kind of equivalent to a high point optic. Yeah, it's inexpensive. I, was, I think it was about forty some dollars, under fifty bucks, let's say, with the mount and everything came with it and the battery. Um, I'm anxious to go test it out though and see how it does. There's some people that complain that they don't hold up and, and this and that, and some people say, "Hey, they're great for the money." Um, it's not like a you know a vortex or or anything from right on um, or uh, what's the Burris fast fire you know they use on these a lot. Um, or Trijicon. It's none of the, none of the, the higher up names. Uh, but I didn't have the budget to spend at this point, and I wanted just something to try out. And it seemed like for the money, it might be something that will hold up for a little while, hopefully. So I figured I'd give it a go, and we'll see how it, how it does. Plus, I want to kind of see how it is to actually shoot with a, a dot on my pistol. I have not had one before to do that with. So it's a new experience. I know I know you guys, a lot of you guys have the RMR on yours already. I know, I know you're going to show that, Kent. Um <laughs> And that's one of the things I want to add to my Glock 19, of course, is the RMR. It's funny you mentioned that. I literally just, while you were, like, getting dressed and doing your hair or whatever you were doing, I literally just placed my order with ATEI to customize the shit out of this 17 Gen 5. Really? What are you going to do to it? Uh, Serrations, front and rear, RMR, buy the dot from them, grip reduction, and stippling. Nice. Yeah, that, that's cool. I, I would, I'd like to do some more actual have some framework done on my my 19, the one that I have that's all customized out. Um, that's one of the next steps for it, the RMR and doing the the um, frame mods, you know, stippling and and like the undercuts and all that kind of stuff. That's pretty cool. Hey Rick, are we are we on your A channel or B channel right now? The nail strike, so we can't do it live, um, unfortunately. So. That's how you, you have to find us right now. And I'll, I'll upload this video later on to the main channel so that people can still watch it. Unfortunately, with the channel strike situation, I think we have to like September before that gets cleared up, which really sucks. Um, but uh, yeah, I want to give a shout out to our, our guy Jerry too, who's always always on my Facebook, uh, liking the videos and everything that we got going on. And if he's watching, you know, thanks for uh, hanging out and watching us, Jerry. Um, I actually did not get to post this over on gunchannels.com this time, but if you're watching this video, go check out gunchannels.com. It's a good place for for a lot of types of gun content, uh, for sure. <clears throat> big big uh, proponent of their site. 
Um, and uh, if you want to also help support our channel and the States of America Team Project, um, you can check out uh, our Amazon links below the videos and also uh, our Patreon site as well, which is patreon.com forward slash biggunner81. So something else I was going to get into tonight too, and you guys can chime in on this. Just a topic that came to my came to my head after I had a discussion earlier this evening. <clears throat> um, vehicles and tactical aspect. So I was thinking about this. I have I have a couple different vehicles, right? I got a sports car, I got a truck, and I got a van. Um, out of those three different options, you know, the most tactical for me is the minivan. Uh, believe it or not. Uh, soccer mom minivan style, you know, and all that. It, it kind of goes, I know Ken's <laughs> cracking up, but this is my topic for tonight. Just listen to me and hear me out. Wait, 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 wait. Your topic for tonight is tactical minivans? Yes. Fuck yeah, man. Let's do this shit. I told you. So yeah, I come up with goofy shit sometimes. This is what we're going to own. I thought this was a joke. You're, you're live, dude. I'm all right, hit it. Hit it, big guy. This is me self-muting. <laughs> so you don't crack up too bad. This is, you guys all muted. No, okay, great. So I'll I'll just have that and kind of start leaning into this one a little bit. So I have a 2006 Town and Country, right? You got the, that's you know it's older van now at this point, but it's a nice clean van. Um, stow and go seating. Picture this: stow and go seating. For those who don't know this, you know the seats fold up. They go into the floor when they're in their upright position, so to speak, in the usable seating position. You have cavities in the floor. You could store all types of cool shit in. So think about this. You could put like um I think I think I can get my rifle, some of my rifles in there underneath the floor. It just depends on how long they are and what angle I can put them in and all that kind of stuff. But you can definitely put like ammo and pistols and stuff below the floor for sure. I've done that. Um and it hides it out of sight, out of mind, you know. Nobody suspects it's there because it just on the surface, if you look in the windows, it's just a regular minivan. And nobody suspects the butterfly, so you know. Make sure you got some butterfly stickers on the back of it too, you know. Um, <laughs> so anyway, uh, that was just my thought because you know you think about it, you know, pickup truck and all that kind of stuff. It's supposed to exude that whole you know ruggedness, and you might be more prone to find something inside of it, you know, versus like a regular soccer mom's minivan. Um, so something I was just kind of talking about earlier tonight. Um, you guys have any thoughts on that one, Kent? I know you're laughing, cracking up. All right, so. Yes, totally. I I drove a uh, I drove a not a Chrysler. Well, it was a Chrysler. I drove a Dodge for work for a company I work for. They gave us uh, what a caravans or whatever with the stow and go seating and all that stuff. Yep. And I kept work equipment in the stow and go seating area, um, just because it was it was easy, out of sight, out of mind. But yeah, like if you want to talk about if what you mean by this is not standing out in a crowd. And somebody walks out into a parking lot and they see a hundred rigs. Where is there going to be a gun? Mm -hmm. The the O six Chrysler is probably not on the list. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, so yeah, I get that. I'm screwed. I got a rooftop tent and a big ass rack on my truck and <laughs> the whole nine yards and obvious obvious gearboxes and stuff. Like, you know, uh, whatever it is, who it is. I mean, I'm not I'm not hiding anything, and I don't have forty vehicles either i got one so not right. much i can do about that and well sophie has one but you get what i'm saying mm -hmm. but yeah i mean sure if you're gonna if you're gonna not stand out in a crowd then i'm with you if you're talking like if the fucking world ended and what what vehicle would i get in it would not be a minivan oh i, I concur that's exactly it like so the, uh, all right now the apocalypse comes i got my lifted ford f-250 you know diesel what color is over shit. what color is your soccer mom van uh red how like, tinted are the windows? Uh, it's got the factory privacy glass. Do you drive by soccer fields? Um, not typically. Do you ever offer candy out the windows in public <laughs> places <laughs> such as pools no, or no, malls? Just, or... Just, just free ammo from time to time. <laughs> Dude, you can do whatever you want to me for free ammo. I'll get in the back <laughs> of the van. Yeah, it's, I've got a, little, you know, a sticker on the back, you know? Free yeah, ammo. free ammo. Yeah. Huh? Like the ice cream man, like Herbert on uh, Family Guy. Da, 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 da. 
Oh man. Yeah, wow. but all right. So the mini bit. What were your other rigs? You got a you got an FT50. Yep, that's two fifty. That's the you apocalyptic a, uh you know yeah. vehicle of choice right there. It's a quad cab, throw the guns in the back, you know. Sure, yeah. And uh, you know, it's got plenty of room in the back for picking up whatever I got throwing and haul around with me and it can tow a freaking house. So you know, that's what that's for. You drive over Priuses all day long if need be. No offense yeah, to those no. going Priuses, I get it. <laughs> no, for sure. But um, what was I? What was I just gonna ask you? Um, and you have a you have a Corvette, right? That's right. I got the the ninety five Corvette, which is you know fast and fun to play with. Well, fast in a relative term, but it's it's sporty. It's fun to play with. You know. Yeah. I'll tell you what. The Corvette does have one. Well, at least the ninety five has a cool little feature on it. <clears throat> I think those who maybe don't have Corvettes before or haven't been around them. At least this particular model. Because everyone's a little different, uh, or the different generations of what you what features you have. On mine, on the '95, and I forget what year they started this in. I want to say, and I used to be a Corvette expert, right? Um, right when they started kind of getting into the uh, um, body style that the LT1 motors were in, which I think was right when, when they in 1991, I believe um, they had the L98, which is the two port motor, and then '92 they went into the LT1. Not to get too much off topic. The door panels on these, on the driver and passenger doors, are like this little armrest type thing on it. Well, it doesn't look like it, but the armrest actually flips up. And it has a pretty good amount of storage inside. You could probably put a nice little pocket pistol, I think, in it. I haven't tried it, but it looks like it has that kind of room. You could probably put something in there. If nothing, not, not nothing else, you can definitely put like a, um, you know, extra mag or a couple extra mags in there for sure. And then the center console has a spot kind of where you could put a pistol down inside of it if you needed to as well. And it's, and it's lockable. But that's like kind of like one of the bare minimum. You just want to get out and go and have you know your bare essentials with you, so to speak. Not carry a bunch of crap with you, like you know zombie apocalypse or trip to the range or whatever. So those are my my three vehicles I currently own. Um, what other vehicles do you guys think would be uh, inconspicuous as far as the tactical aspect of it, besides the Sakuran minivan? Well, I mean, while you're at it. You know, your <clears throat> any basically anything that's like your typical urbanite rig. So your your Subarus, your and I'm not I'm not ripping on anybody. I'm just saying, you know, Subarus, um, any kind of like a like a Ford, like a Ford Focus or a Honda CRV or a some something that screams like family car or dad car or whatever like that. Right. Any kind of a Jeep or a truck or a, you know, a muscle car, a hot rod, something flashy, you know, that screams the dude's got some money to spend, whether it's on guns or whatever, like, if it's going to get rolled, that's probably going to be it, right? Because the scumbags are looking for money if you're going to, if you're going to get into your car. Um, I don't know. That's just what's off the top of my head. Obviously a Prius, dude, you could be sly as hell in a Prius. Wouldn't nobody see that coming? Yeah. He could, I guess. <laughs> Sorry, I had, like I got, I, I will give some respect to the technology that went into the Prius, but the whole premise of it, um, I don't know. It depends on what you use it for, I guess. I haven't owned one, so I can't really speak a hundred percent of it. I've only worked on them. Um, I'll add a couple little side notes on the Prius, just kind of give a little background where I'm coming from. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So. For example, you want to, there's different ways to look at it. Save the environment, right? Less emissions, blah, 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 whatever, better fuel economy, yada, yada. Well, people don't always often take into consideration the cost, the environmental impact on the production of that vehicle. The What it takes to make the battery pack that goes inside of it is pretty detrimental to the environment. Not to mention the disposal of those batteries once they're, they're done and, and, you know, finished out, <clears throat> which, you know, takes a long time period to begin with. Um, also, when it comes to Prius, people think, well, awesome fuel economy. Well, it's more for city driving, you know, versus driving a long distance driving for the, the fuel economy difference. Um, you'll see better like in the city type stuff, um, where you're getting lots of starts and stops and things like that. So that's just my little two cents on the side of it. Not a huge fan of the Prius. I do like and, and respect the amount of technology that went into designing it. I think that's awesome. I like all, all the cool features like... If I remember right, because it's been a while since I have worked on them, 
they have like a, um, a thermos built into them to kind of keep the engine temperature already up to peak temperature when you first start it up. I think it, I forget what the, how many hours it'll stay hot for inside. I want to say it's over eight. Um, basically stores the antifreeze in it like a hot chamber. It's kind of neat. All types of stuff. I don't remember all the exact things anymore, like I said, but um, they are fascinating cars. So, you know, is what it is, but I'm not particularly a fan of them where I'd want to have one. <clears throat> They're great for sneaking up on people, though. Yeah, I mean, I just that was the lead into a joke that I just decided not to tell because I'm trying to keep stuff above board around here these days and trying to, you know, try to elevate the level instead of you almost sound like it almost sounds like you act respectable. Yes, <laughs> I was gonna say, Ken, it almost sounds like you got a new sponsor. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> Wait, hold on. I do have a new sponsor. It's whatever company my wife just bought me a beer from. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Thank you, dear. That, um, but I don't know. What other cars? How about? I had a I had a input on that. So go for it. One somebody that I know used to have one of those. Um, it's like the Chevy Avalanche. Um, it was. Yep. It's like the truck that looks like a car, kind of. Yeah, um, the Avalanche. Yeah, um, I think it might have been the. What is the? Mm, I don't think it was a Chevy though. It was uh, some other that was basically the same thing. Oh, like the Cadillac, uh, the Escalade one. That it wasn't. Had? It wasn't the Cadillac. It. It, uh, I think it was the Honda Ridgeline, maybe. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks yeah. kind of like it. You're right. Yeah. So the coolest part about that, and mm -hmm. I'm always like, ah, come on, dude. Just get a truck or get a car. You know, just pick one and go with that. But fan of El Camino, huh? then I went to the – well, yeah, no. I would be I would be a fan of those. But yeah. the coolest part is when he took me to the range, he's like, oh, we got all our stuff in here. And it was in a, like, cutout section in the bed that was like under the truck bed basically. So if you didn't know, you, you know, you're just like open the top lid like a regular truck. Oh, there's nothing in here. But you know, there was another deck lid under there that held shit tons of stuff. So that's really cool. Yeah. That's like, I you know in the avalanches and stuff they have, um, which is also one of the problems they have with it. So on the, on the GM version with like the actual av avalanche or the Calic version, um, they have like uh, of course they're the, the how do we call it cladding with the actual panels for the hard tonneau cover that's in panels. They've had issues with those leaking with the seals on them. Like, um, because you saw so many different areas where you can have a water leak. So you have to be careful what you put in it. But also I had a friend who had one. The other part of it is the back of the cab. If I call it that, um, since it's all kind of like one flowing body, I guess you'd say, um, the back of the cab has like a, a panel or something that either opens up like a door or something. I don't remember off the top of my head. It's been a while since I looked at one. But the whole premise was that you can actually put like a um, four by eight sheet of plywood or something in the back of it and still fit it inside where it kind of go into the back seats a little bit. Um, but the other problem they have with that is, you know, if you picture it, most pickups have a, like a raked stance. What that means is like the back end sits up a little bit higher so you can handle like any load. So you can kind of like when you put something in the back of it, it kind of brings the back down. You're not sitting sagging the opposite way. Excuse me. So um, what happens is then if you have like a, Let's say the tire cover is leaking or you don't have a, the panels installed and that back seal around the by the back portion of the cab, uh, those seals tend to leak and you get water inside of the cab um, when you get like a heavy rain or something like that. It's one of the downsides of the Avalanche and the, and the, um, the Calica, Calica so was it SXT or something like that, I think they called it. I don't remember. Um, I like both those trucks, though. I think it's a cool design. Uh, I did want one for, for a time period, but then I kind of got past that, I guess. Decided to go with the F-Series, you know, number one selling truck in America. Here's, which here's I, one for you. What's that? How about the uh, Carpet Muncher 5000, otherwise known as the Subaru Baja? I'm not familiar with I know Subaru, but I don't know what the Baja is. The Baja is like the El Camino truck-looking abortion <clears throat> from 2006. Really? They had it in the uh, States here? Oh, yeah, they had it here. Yeah. I don't think they make those currently anymore. Oh, no, I, think it's like, you know, I think I do remember that. Doesn't it have like a like a almost like a light bar or something like that? Almost like a tubular pieces on the back. Yeah, I do yep. remember that. 
That's yep. right. I know there's like a in Australia they have like a, I think something called a Holden or something like that. I think it's I think it's like basically a GM type vehicle, kind of similar to like the Pontiac GTO or something that has like a pickup truck bed on it. I thought those were kind of cool. Um, of course, it's nice to you haul your stuff to the range, but I don't know what they have as far as storage panels. Like back to the Avalanche too. I forgot to mention that you mentioned about the false floor. The Avalanche has um, almost like well, it has like tool compartments or like compartments around the perimeter of the bed. So it had doors you could open up and store stuff and lock them in there. So you could have like all your range stuff in there. And no one would see it unless they try to pry those open and break them open. I believe you can also use them as like kind of like a cooler or an ice chest. I think they have drain plugs in the bottom of it or a drain of some type where you can just throw ice in it and throw your you know beer in it or whatever. Not that you want to be drinking and driving, but if you get to your destination and you want to have have something there, whatever kind of cold beverages you want, um, it's kind of an idea. So I also want to give a shout out to everybody out there on uh, YouTube who's who's uh, chatting away with us. Let's see, we got Midnight Range out there with us. Um, there was someone else earlier I saw, John Brown Productions. Um, so, yeah, thanks we're for over on the, out, We're guys. over on the chat currently talking about how ugly I am. So Yeah, I was kind of just scro- kind of scrolling through that a little bit um, <clears throat> and so on. Nobody yeah. cared what you wrote in the bed of a pickup. Now you get arrested for child endangerment. Yes. In fact, I remember um, I also have Vanessa on there too. Welcome. Thanks for uh, for hanging out with us. And, and Oh, Vanessa. Yeah. I don't know who she is, but she's on here a lot. Yeah, she's um, always here. Yeah. One of our, one of our house uh, household names, I guess, that's out there on, on the YouTube. Um, and again, for those that are out there watching currently live, Eventually, we'll, we should be back on the regular main channel, the A channel, I guess you can call it, and this is the B channel. Um, you know, this is the one that we don't have a lot of subscribers on. So if you're watching it here on Big Energy and Live, that channel, go ahead and click that subscribe button and uh, and all that good stuff. Um, and again, we'll, we'll post this video up later on when uh, once it's already recorded and put it on the main channel so you all out there can watch it. And it's probably, uh, some people might be watching it there and so on um, and all that. So, and if you guys got any questions or comments out there, um, Feel free to post them up. We're always kind of watching there and see what you guys have and all that. Um, but uh, yeah, it's right in the back of the pickup truck. I remember the last time I did that, I was working at a shop and we had a 1936 Ford International Harvester pickup. And uh, we're cruising through town. And my friend, who I worked with at the time, who happens to actually be, um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the Liberty Marksman. They've been on the show a couple times. Uh, Ken and um, and his buddy. Um, why is my name going blank? I can't even think why. Scott, duh. Ken and Scott. Um, <clears throat> and so anyway, Ken, I used to work with him. And uh, yeah, we, were, we uh, took the old truck from our shop out around town, like for the car show night. And I was like riding the back of that truck, you know, sitting in the back. It's like a very small, narrow bed. It was kind of fun. But yeah, nowadays you can't do that so much. Just as a side comment to the whole uh, trucks and, and beds and storage and all that. But I'm pretty wow. sure I have at least one cousin whose mental capacity today is a direct correlation of falling out of the farm truck <laughs> and landing on his head. Sorry, I don't, it might be a true story. I'm sorry, I mean to laugh. No, it's no. Well, I mean, I, Matt, I love you, man, but you're retarded. But anyway, no, I mean, we were we were riding we were riding around in the farm truck. There must have been about six of us boys, and Grandpa was driving, and Matt wouldn't listen. He was sitting up on the bed rails, and we went over a bump. He fell over backwards. And I went to Ooh. holler to Grandpa and my oldest cousin to slap me on the shoulder and go, shut up, boy. So we didn't say nothing, and we let him lay there. <laughs> he had to walk down to the freaking barn. That was a and, very country story. But anyway. Wow. Yeah, true story. I guess tough love. I don't know. <laughs> no, we just waited to get Grandpa. behind? Yeah, everybody said nothing to Grandpa. This, but that's, that's now that I look back on friend. it and I'm not like 12 anymore, I got to figure Grandpa probably knew too and didn't do nothing about it. <laughs> wow. Anyway. Yeah. You're now my favorite, Kent. Yeah. You done graduated to the top, boy. <laughs> so, Corey, did you fall out of any, any trucks? I, ha- I have never fallen out of a truck. Um... <laughs> <laughs> my, gr- my now, but my grandpa has. My grandpa fell out of a truck. Uh, let's see, he's been dead almost three years. Luckily, it didn't kill him. It was colon cancer. I was gonna say, if he died falling out of the truck, it's over. Uh, <laughs> the the show. It was probably yeah. about 
Uh, it, was, it was probably about two years before he died. He fell out of his truck. He was trying to get something down, and he missed the. He actually missed the bumper off the Ooh, tailgate man. to step down, and actually just like tumbled right out, and ended up crawling in the house like for three weeks on his hands and knees to get around places because he didn't want to go to the doctor. <laughs> well, that's so, less funny now. <laughs> we yeah. all laughed. I mean, hell, when when he went into uh, to AFib downstairs you know he's pretty much dead you know there's no part no pulse no nothing and uh my grandma still tells the story she tells it she just told it to me like last weekend actually um my grandpa's laying at like the bottom of the stairs and she's like bob you better not be playing with me and she kicked him and then you know got right back up and was like call the ambulance <laughs> oh man so basically Jesus. basically her kicking him like taught him a lesson to like never try to die on her <laughs> wow. okay so, what's the most redneck thing you've ever fallen off of? Uh, a Mazda uh, Miata. I'm trying to think what I've fallen off of. Did I'm, you fit in a Mazda Miata? Yeah, uh, I was just thinking the same thing. His legs are hanging out the trunk. Oh, man. Well, I've driven them. And I mean, it's, it's, like a, it's like a shoebox. It was okay. It was literally like uh, have any of you guys seen Masterminds on Netflix? With Zach Galifianakis, I've heard of it. Maybe okay. Well, <laughs> I don't know. Oh, Owen, do Owen you listens. ever sleep, or do you just hit the next button on YouTube and Netflix and watch the next thing that comes up, man? It's literally the next button. You know, when I have time, it's the next button. Yeah. Um, but Owen Wilson has a car in there, and it's like this junky little beater, and I can't oh. think of what the name of it is. But he literally puts like twenty foot wheels on each of it when he robs this bank. And that's pretty much the Miata that I was in, yeah. It was like 20 feet high, and I pretty much slipped off the tire because someone thought it was funny to lube it up before I got up there. Yeah. Man, I, can't, I can't think of the uh, – sorry, my phone's vibrating. Um, I can't think of uh, what I would have fallen off of that was redneck. I, I'm trying to remember the times I could even, I've even fallen. That girl you met at the county fair counts. Didn't she fall off of her? <laughs> what girl at the county fair? They don't go to county fairs. Come on, I just made it up. You know that. I know. Um, but, uh, yeah, let's see. Though. Last time I fell, I tripped in a parking lot over a parking block. But it wasn't falling off of something. I was just tripping over something. Um, I have tripped in the shop before a few years ago and fell. Like just walking, I think pretty much just walking is when I fall. Um, let's see. Oh, I guess not falling off of, but I was shooting practical rifle one time, and I had um, <clears throat> I fell backwards, but I was able to keep control of my my rifle and keep continuing. Um, and that was because I had a heavy weighted backpack on. And I was kind of like squatting down on the ground to shoot something, and I and the weight of it kind of pulled me back, and I just lost my balance. Um, I think that happened, and then what else? I don't know. I think that's about it. I don't remember all the times I've fallen pretty much. No, I don't have any good stories. You know, in fact, I know we talked about cars a little bit tonight, um, so a little bit off topic of, of the gun thing, but uh, for example, like falling, I've never, I haven't, I can't recall breaking a bone in my body, but I think I might have at one time, and I'll clarify that with I don't have a very good story for it. I was meeting my friends, um, to go out to dinner getting out of the Corvette one night um, and I was kind of getting out in a hurry and I caught the steering wheel with my hand, like right between my, my pinky and I heard a loud crack. It was black and blue. So I think there's something broken here because ever since then, it's like, see this? <laughs> I had to like forcibly make my hand sit like that. It doesn't just like naturally fall that way anymore. So I think it kind of cracked something apart a little bit with it. Who knows? It's weird, but I don't have a good story for it. I just have stupid stories about how I did stuff. Oh, topic of guns. Here's one. I'm probably boring Corey with this story, but um, it wasn't a gun. But I was. It was like I thought I shot myself in a sense. I was working on a. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> like how I say it. Follow all my logic. Hang on, I got the story. It's coming. I didn't shoot myself, but I was working on it. So I was working on, uh, I was doing, I was working in the shop, right, working on cars, uh, doing some brake work, and 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 you know, being living in a salt belt, you get like a lot of rust and corrosion, 
So I had a caliper pin that was seized inside of a caliper bracket. For those who don't know, it's basically like a almost like a bolt that sits in a bore, but it's, it just like seized together. And um, I was heating it up with a torch. And most of the time, it's not a big deal. You heat up a torch. I have like pliers. I'm kind of wiggling it, get it unseized and cleaned up, and sandblast it and whatever, and place the pin, whatever. Um, and so as I'm heating it up, I got it hot pretty quick, and it was sealed enough that it basically just shot out. So I had this bolt, like, you know, or what actually they call it a bolt, the caliper pin, you know, pin that's inside is about this long. Um, I don't know what the exact diameter is. It's less than half an inch diameter, probably a quarter inch diameter, a little bigger than a quarter inch diameter. Um, shoot out, it hit me, and I was like, holy shit, because it was loud. It hit me, like, in the stomach, but it was enough power that it bounced off of me and went across the shop about another 30 feet or 40 feet away, hit our spray booth, the door of it, and put a dent in it. Like, it hit it that hard. I'm like, like a little, little tiny dent in it. Um, and I looked, I had a big, I guess you say hematoma, like a big bruise, like that big on my stomach from it. I was like, thank you, God, that I did not, like, just shoot myself in the stomach with this thing. And it, like, didn't, like, penetrate into my skin. Um, so that happened. So you almost got penetrated with something about that long and a half an inch in diameter. Fuck. I should I should think my stories out ahead of time, but I don't. As, as, you, know, as all you know, as all of you know out there that watch this, we don't pre-plan these shows. Usually not. We don't have a guideline. We don't have. Yeah, just, just in case you thought we were professionals. Yeah, yeah. in case you thought we were you. <laughs> We don't. We just come up with topics. We talk. We have fun. No. People watch it and, and hopefully they enjoy it. If they don't, then they probably don't watch it. But professional blasphemers is what we are. Blasphemers. Yeah. I don't know about that, but. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, has anyone ever have a ND? Oh, okay. So there's a question out here. Um, yeah. Yeah. So was it bridge fishing? It took a chunk out of my, my leg. Oh, oh, midnight range. Oh, I'm just going back to some of the comments. He said um, he fell off a bridge fishing one time and took a chunk out of his leg. I guess that was his redneck story of how, how he fell. Um, and then he said, bigger, bigger than you in live. Anyone ever have an ND? So negligent discharge. Um. Have, have any of you guys? Yeah, I'll, I'll start. I'll start the ball rolling. All in one. Um, <clears throat> I was so. All right. So here, I'll put my professional gun instructor, serious guy hat on for like three seconds. Like, ND is the correct term. Negligent discharge, not accidental discharge. Some form of negligence is involved any time a round gives off that you don't intend. Um, so let's just, let's just be real straight about that. Um, 16 years old, Marlin 336. Um, you know, the deal with the 336, once you, once you run the lever, you got to put the hammer up and all the way and then back to half cock to make that gun safe. Hmm, so you, you have to manipulate the trigger and allow the hammer to come forward in order for that gun to be safe. Otherwise you're walking around with a totally cocked firearm. And I had hunted with that gun a bunch, and I paid no attention, and I sent off around out into the freaking sky, out in the middle of you know the farm, and uh, my old man was pissed. Didn't talk for like three hours. Then said, "Come on, we're getting in the truck." Drove me down to the firehouse. I said, "What the hell are we doing?" He goes, "Oh, I'm just waiting to see who you shot." And then uh, we didn't hunt for the rest of the season, and. Uh, I had to earn my gun privileges back. So, yeah. <clears throat> I had one. Okay. Been there, done that. Learn from it. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to knock some fake wood on my desk here. Never during a class. Never on a range. Never in that kind of situation whatsoever. But, yeah, once. It's knocking on the wood. Um, no, that's cool. I mean, I, I, I mean not, not that it happened. That's a good story to share it. Um I'm trying to think. I I didn't have like a, an ND really. I mean, I've had times where I've been was shooting so fast, I bump my trigger as I'm aiming at a target. I guess you can call. It, I mean, I don't know. It's meaning, meaning like I'm rushing through like um, a stage or something, and you know I'm just clicking away at it, and I kind of like put a little more too much, too much tension on it right away, and I set one off, but I'm, I'm on a target at the time. Does that make sense? I don't know if you can really consider that an ND or not. It was like I wasn't really planning to do it, but I did it anyway, and I was pointing in a safe direction. Yeah, I don't know. I 
I, I guess if I, I wouldn't call that an ND. I guess if you like spirited uh, shooting. Yeah, I. I mean, it, it's not as though you weren't intending to be shooting a rifle at that moment. You just didn't intend to shoot that many shots. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Right. Right. Like yep. I had no intention of sending a round off at anything at all in my moment, and I did. <clears throat> So I, I don't know. I wouldn't call that an ND. And if we're going to define that as an ND, I think I probably have a few more shooting, you know, right? Uh, like faster stages or whatever. Or somebody says, you know, all right, guys, we're going to do a bill drill. So you're going to draw the gun and shoot six rounds. I mean, have I ever sent a seventh round out of my pistol accidentally? I don't, maybe, you know, how many thousand rounds? I don't know. But I intended I've, to be shooting a pistol. Brennan, have you ever had that happen or no? Uh, the closest that I've came is, uh, like shooting the light trigger Ruger 22 and, uh, just, you know, having, uh, having to shoot, meaning to shoot one, but the trigger is so light shooting like two, but still into the target and everything. Um, I got a question for you too, cause you sent me that video like with that out of battery, uh, um, discharge, whatever you call it. What actually yeah. happened there? How, how did that happen? What happened? Uh, I'm I'm still not exactly sure what caused the out of battery, uh, what it, what caused it to go off out of battery. But uh, basically, I was shooting speed steel, and I had shot. It was on the first stage. I'd shot four rounds, like you know, four cycles. I guess there's five targets on the steel range. Um, and then on the fifth one, um, we lost your audio. It got muted. I don't know what happened there. Sorry. I hit the space bar, mm -hmm. but yeah, on the, uh, on the fifth cycle, um, I was aiming at the target, pulled the trigger and the bolt wasn't all the way seated. And, uh, yeah, the, the round went off out of battery and you could see, you know, some smoke and it was, uh, it's not a good situation. Nothing terribly bad happened. Uh, we cleared the gun. There was no squib in it. And, uh, I tried to shoot it again after we made sure it was safe, but there was no ejector. Um, so at that point I just kind of flagged it and bagged it and, you know, called it a day with that. But, um, the closest thing that I can think is it may have been a carbon ring that was in the chamber that, you know, I mean, I look down the barrel and I clean my guns, you know, pretty regularly, but, um, i never did plunk test the 22 rounds going in. So that's one thing that somebody said to try. So I'm hoping that that's the issue. If not, I don't know. We'll see, see what happens, but yeah, so it was, you had an out of battery discharge of the 22. Yeah. What gun? It was the Ruger Mark II slab side competition target. So I was just looking at mine because I was kind of curious about this. Like, you know, like for example, on an AR-15, um, you know, trying to have an outer ba out of battery, uh, you know, where you can drop the trigger on on it and hit the firing pin and so on. Like, when the bolt is back far enough that there's a shroud on that uh, on that bolt to catch it. So I was curious if. You know, if that was kind of applicable to the design of this pistol, like how far out of battery can you hold it, you know, for example, and still get the trigger to go off? I got some information on that actually today on some of the Rimfire Central forums, and I believe it's about a sixteenth of an inch, which does make sense because when I looked at the round when it was in there, I mean, you could see where it, you know, kind of exploded out the side of the ejection port or whatever. And it was, I mean, about a sixteenth of an inch. I wouldn't even call it an eighth of an inch. You know, yeah, it was, was very minimal. I was pulling that to see, and you can feel like where where the trigger is on it. Let's see, I have the safety on right now. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of put it on the screen here so you guys can all see this. Um, <clears throat> Trying to pull it back like that much. Yeah. So I'm trying to hold it back so you can get like about that 16 inch bench roughly. So yeah, it does do it. Yeah. So I can see how that's doable. Like you said, a carbon ring or something like that where you just didn't quite like bunk test makes makes an idea. Like 
you know, here's, stopping a bit more in the barrel. Here's the yeah, problem yeah. with that that idea, though. I mean, I just ran, you know, <clears throat> 20 rounds right before that of the same ammo, the same gun right before that, and, you know, everything seated just fine. I was using CCI mini mags, so it wasn't like cheap crap, dirty ammo. Um, this is a problem with just one. Yeah, I mean, yeah, one, I don't know. one dead round. And when I, after I cleared it and got the, uh, got it going again, I tried to seat another round and, you know, continue the stage or whatever. And there was uh, still a little bit of brass shrapnel in the chamber area that was, was keeping the next it. round from, you know, fully seating. So at that point, I was like, I'm not comfortable, you know, shooting this thing anymore. Yeah, today. time to take it home and clean it up and recheck everything. Yeah. 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 So it makes sense. But that's why we wear uh, eye protection. So, you know. yeah. So when that happened, what did that feel like? Uh, it felt like a squib, honestly. Uh, and there was, you know, a lot of smoke in the chamber area. You didn't get hit with anything, though. No, no, nobody got it. For how small it is, I mean, you can still get shrapnel from the little tiny cartridge, but. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you know, yeah. I'm, and you didn't get any burns or anything either, because uh, I'm assuming because the way the porting is on it, you know, they, it's coming out the side. Your hand, unless your hand was near it, you know, right? The story, but um, I think that's kind of fascinating too about when when you have failures with different firearms. I haven't been there to see one hands on in the sense of like a gun exploding, you know. I have. You have. So tell, oh, yeah. tell me tell me your story real quick about it. All right, so. <laughs> Uh, when I first got my Dylan 550, uh -oh. a 380 case ended up getting loaded with 9 millimeter charge and a 9 millimeter projectile. Really? That caused it? I did not own, at the time, a 380. I was not shooting 380. The only thing I could figure is when I picked up my brass at the range, somebody else had been shooting a 380. I and found 380s in my 9 millimeter before just from picking up the brass range. And there was one fucking 380. And the only reason I know is, and I have pictures of this all somewhere. I, I'll show them to you then. But the piece, the case head separated and blew to shit. Yeah, you know, there you go, Brandon. And the 380, I could, I could still see the marking. Hold that up again, head. Brandon. Sorry. Yeah, hold that up again, Brandon. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Um, I could still see the markings on the case head, so I know it was a 380 case. So it got, you know, a tight group charge of nine mil, uh, you know, proportions under 115 grain, and it it blew the shit out of a Sig 320RX. So it matter well, if, well, it got destroyed. Matter well, I don't know. I don't know if this will show, but I got a pretty nasty scar on my thumb because I'm a lefty, so thumbs forward, right handed. My right hand thumb was forward on the on the slide. Mm -hmm. uh, the slide the slide blew out from you know the chamber area just back to the rear slide serrations. Um, so this the is grip like totaled out basically. The grip blew. The grip you know yeah the, no the gun was total. There was no and it and it bent up the uh, what do you want to call it the FCU the SIG the fire control. So there was, yeah, so there was no getting a new grip frame or anything. Mm -hmm. um, I sent it back to SIG as a total loss, and SIG sent me, sent me back a new gun. Oh, wow. So, oh, crap. What did they know, charge you to do that? They charged me 100 and whatever dollars, $125 for shipping and some whatever else. Wow. I still have the – somewhere around here, I still have – this is this is back right when the three or when the uh, 320 came – RX came out. Mm -hmm. um, but if you, if you scroll my feeds and look back far enough, you'll see the – I took a picture of what Sig sent me back the you know, the email and stuff, the correspondence that came in the box. I mean, you know, they were good about it. Um, I didn't lie to them. I didn't tell them it was factory. I told them it was a reload. I didn't, you know, I was going to be shitty about it. And they, you know, a couple, two, three weeks, and I got a, I got a working gun. I still have that gun to this day. We're in the safe. That's um, awesome, that's but, great. yeah, that son of a bitch, it, it was like – the sensation was as if somebody hit your hand with a hammer as hard as they could hit it. Hmm. So, so do you think that the uh, the charge was just too much for the 380 case to yes. withstand? Yes. Hmm. Yep. Yep. So in other words, so in other words, if you look at the case volume between the 380 and a nine mil, yeah, it's much. Um, 
and capacity. And the seating depth would have been would have been different, which would have been fucked up. And and I just I just didn't catch it in my QC. Yeah. And well, you know, I got on the. It's all on me. I mean, I fuck. I could not have a right thumb. Like it, you know, is what it is. It's not anybody else's fault but my own. Um, but and that's why I was asking because, uh, like, I, I loaded. I found a three eighty round, uh, you know, case that that got loaded, and I caught this in QC before I, you know, went to the match. You can see this one right here is the three eighty case, but they're loaded to the same overall length. So yeah, so you would think the diameter, you know, it's just that the length of the brass isn't as long. But it's a little it bit more about the same pressure, but if the 380 case is not made to withstand as much pressure, that might explain why. So. Well, the 380 case still doesn't have as much case volume, which means your powder is closer to the base of that projectile. Oh, so your pressure, okay. So your pressure is going to be fucked up either way. Yeah. You're going to have okay. a pressure spike regardless, no matter how you do that. So. Right. Hmm. Good that answers my question. Thank now you. i got to keep, keep my eye out because I have had – you know, like I said, 380 cases like that, I found. I haven't loaded any that I'm aware of, you know. But um, what was I going to say about that, too? We talked about the loading pulling up a gun. But it seems like for most of what I've seen happen, usually it's like minor injuries, like like uh, maybe some cuts. You might need to get some stitches maybe if it's real bad. But there's a lot of cases where guns blow up and, and people don't get hurt. And I think a lot of it has to do with the engineering behind it. You know, like the AR-15, for example – you know, it's designed so that when when it you know when we have a catastrophic failure, there's certain things that will happen, like blowing out the magazine out of the bottom of it to give a path for that for those gases that are going to kind of go. Um, so I mean, you've seen you've seen different pictures of these things blow up. Yeah, you can get hurt, no doubt, because you're going to have metal shrapnel and stuff if it really blows to pieces. But a lot of times, people usually end up walking away from these things with just some, some minor burns or you know little cuts or something, and that's about it. Yep. At least, and again, I don't know. Not everyone's going to work out that way, but I, I'm, I guess, what I'm getting at is I'm a little bit impressed with that fact that you have something that can can explode and, and grenade, so to speak, and still be uh, not as uh, a real bad outcome from it. Oh, there are still, so. yeah, no, there are still pieces of that 320 on that range today <laughs> somewhere. I guarantee you. Um, sure. And whatever you know, they they didn't. No, ten for that. Like I was yeah. absolutely wearing eyes and ears. Um. But, like, it could have gone so much worse, right? And it didn't. Um, and, it, and it really, like, it gave me a long pause. I didn't pull the handle on that freaking reloading press for about three months. I sat there thinking, you know, do I sell this? Do I go back to single stage? Do I, what the fuck do I do? And then I was like, look, you know, like, that could happen with factory ammo too. And, you know, now I just... I just really am careful to check the head, you know, the uh, markings on every single case I pick up and whatever. I've also found the infamous, um, I think it was a 40 caliber and a 45 or a 9 and a 45. <sighs> you know, someone just somehow tried to fire off around for fun. And I thought it was, it's kind of cool looking to see, like, this how the casing, you know, stretched to beyond its points and just split but yet takes up that shape of you know being fire formed to the chamber um i think that's pretty cool of course you know one of the things to keep in mind too if it doesn't explode the gun you know you're still going to have problems with like um you know that that fire basically burning into that steel you know like I, there's um some photos recently i saw where a guy had a glock and on the back of the glock uh slide you know and the, the uh, breech face i guess um and they were talking about using uh, rifle primers and a pistol primer instead of a pistol primer and having harder cups. And then you're getting like some of that fire from the, uh, um, the ignition and everything kind of blowing around the perimeter of the, the primer cup because it's a hard cup that doesn't seal as well or something. Basically, there's erosion on the steel. So it started, I have a hand up here, like there's a firing pin coming out and it's eroding around the firing pin hole, leaving a circular pattern like where the primer would sit basically. And eventually, you know, it's just going to eat through and, and burn up your, your slide uh, to where it's not going to be reusable or repairable. Um, I thought it was kind of interesting to see that. I never really thought much of that as well. So just kind of sharing that with you all. So, I don't know. You guys got any other thoughts, any other, other topics you want to discuss tonight? 
What's that, Kent? Uh, Mantis X. Oh, yeah. I got one of those. You got one? Yeah. In fact, I I, uh, I met those guys at SHOT Show 2016, and I got one of the demos they gave me. Yep. To play with. They're really cool guys. They're actually out of Illinois, and they were like not all that far away from where I lived. I've got one um, I've had since – what the hell from uh, the outdoor show, the great American outdoor show last year. I ran into them over there. Um, I've just been people. I've been kind of screwing with it recently, but I say we do a little mantis challenge on uh, Facebook or something. Everybody, anybody else have one or is it just you and me? I don't know. Yeah. You know, I have to get the, I actually haven't put the app on my phone again. So I got the new phone. Um, but, uh, there's, um, uh, yeah, they have a social media aspect to it now, is what you're saying, right? Yeah. It's been a while since yeah. I looked at the software, and ironically, I had a conversation with them at SHOT Show about that, which I think might have fueled part of that. Yeah, and yeah, I'm not going to say it any more than that, because I can't, because it, it it's a whole thing. But. I'm not saying I invented the Big Mac. Yeah, I'm, I'm not saying, saying I invented anything. I'm all, just all. saying I was preaching it to them. That hey, some other companies are doing something kind of cool with social media. Have you considered that since it's just software? And they were looking at me and like light bulb, you know, kind of thing. And I'm like, I don't know if I had anything to do with it. Maybe they're just echoing that themselves before I came along talking to them. Who knows? But I was I'm saying, when, I'm not saying I invented the Big Mac. I didn't I'm just saying, anything. I'm just saying I was eating two all beef patties with three pieces of bread. There was a clown watching me three days later. There it is. Hey, uh, speaking about um, eating stuff, um, who chomps ice? Do any of you guys, Brandon? Is this do you like ghetto slang for does meth or? Yeah, that's no. that's like when I'm hungry and trying to stay on my diet, I'll just go to the ice machine. We have the awesome, most awesome crushed ice at our uh, work, so it's kind of hard not to. Yeah, there was a whole discussion about ice chomping. Okay. Well, Corey, I'm posting a Mantis X Corey? challenge. Say that again. You don't chomp on ice? No. Really? No. You just like suck on ice, or you don't you don't chomp on it? I mean, unless it's like the, you know, the the polar pop, you know, ice ice cubes, the little small squares. Generally, generally, I don't unless it's a uh, there's a another kind of ice that I'll chomp on, but normally, normally I don't. Okay. And I missed what you said a minute ago, Kent. I all I said was you, you talked your way around a mantis challenge. I'm trying to I'm trying to call some folks out and do a mantis <laughs> challenge on here. And you're yeah, ice all, all of a sudden you're chomping ice. What what is this mantis that I've heard about? I don't oh, know if there's, okay. there's, check check out there's a video on it. Uh, on my on my YouTube channel on Mantis X, but basically Kent's probably got his out, so he could probably show you. <laughs> I don't. I, it didn't sound right. Softball. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's this little. Um, I'm gonna call it a Bluetooth device, for lack yeah. of a better word. It connects to your phone, and you put it on the safety check. We're square. Put it on the rail of your pistol. It attaches right. just like a tack light with a little with a little screw and a wa nut and washer on the other end or whatever, um, and it communicates to an app on your phone or your or or a uh, pad, iPad or whatever you know you can do yeah. it. Yeah. Like um, what do you call it? I'm gonna say note tablet. Tablet. Thank you. I'm like gonna say notepad. I don't know what the hell I'm saying. And it's great. It grades your dry fire score. Oh. Based okay. on it does live fire too though. Yeah, but it's it's not as it's not as reliable under live fire as it is under dry fire, in my experience. How um, much do those run about? Oh, uh, hundred and so hold on. My friend's yeah. laughing about the ice comment. Please stand by. Please stand Antis by. Antis X. Hold on, I'll tell you what Amazon sells it for. Here's Amazon. Yeah, what do we got? We got 158 bucks with Prime. Hmm. Follow the link in the description on Big Gutter Andy One Live. You'll uh, help Rick out with his Amazon affiliate thing. Yes, that's right. Please click the Amazon link below the video. Anything you purchase doesn't cost anything extra, but it helps support the channel. Thank you for that plug. And yeah, man. That up. Yeah, I gotta I gotta remind people to use mine. I've made like four dollars on Amazon with my affiliate thing, so I'm killing it. 
Yeah, you, I, I've been putting it in below the videos as a blanket thing anytime I upload a video, just because it helps out with the, with some of the costs involved. I mean, it, I don't make like doing this stuff. I'll just kind of chime in about sponsorships and stuff. I don't make like cash dollars off sponsorships. Um, sometimes it's product donations or discounts. I'm just being straight up honest. And um, any of the contributions from Patreon or from Amazon just go to help fuel like some of the projects that we do. There's a lot of things I do reviews on that I purchased out of pocket. Like for example, you know, I just bought this. I'm, I did the unboxing video on it. I'm gonna do some tests with it. That's a beneficial information for people that may be looking to buy one of those. I can tell you if it's a piece of junk or not, or give some opinions on it once I use it. But I have to buy that out of pocket. So, you know, yeah, it's mine. I'm choosing to buy that and everything. But I'm also trying to provide that information to everybody that's out there watching. And one of the ways I can do that is by being able to have that that those funds to be able to purchase things to do that. So it helps. It doesn't fund everything. It doesn't help pay for this this whole site, but it helps some somewhat. Keep in mind, we also have biggerun81.com um, and the 50 states of air15.com. Um, those websites also cost, you know, there's associated costs with them as well. Um, and speaking of which, before you continue on with the Mantis X, I was going to mention um, with the website, biggerun81.com, we have the store that Brandon helped set up with us. Um, you know, I appreciate you helping out with that, Brandon. And uh, we, um, we've got some of the products up there right now that I'm doing 3D printing on. One of the newest ones is the EDC uh, nightstand. I, call, I want to say nightstand. It's EDC organizer. So for everyday carry, it's got like a section for a, a, basically a cradle for your pistol. Um, you can have like a, a couple of trays on it for like putting a wallet, keys, a uh, knife, flashlight. It's got a cradle for like a cell phone. Um, again, you can even put a watch up there or a spare mag or uh, the top of it also has kind of like a little, couple of hooks where you can hang um, – you know, keys or necklace or bracelet or something off of. So it's got all types of different options for it. They're pretty reasonably priced. You can check out biggeranyone.com and there's a, a link for the store on the on the top menu to go check out what we have. We also got some of the pistol stands and things like that as well. Um, which, you know, for example, like this is one of the ones I was making for the 22s that I've been using like, um, you know, to kind of use as a pistol stand as well so those are not quite up on there yet but uh they're, they're coming soon um dude you just you just sparked something what's that sorry defense no. distributed they just yes. a court case but here in Pennsylvania, our governor and our attorney our attorney dickwad general filed a lawsuit to keep them from allowing traffic on their site from pennsylvania residents because yeah. we're going to we're going to print some ghost guns here in Pennsylvania. The Amish are going to use their printers yeah, to print ghost that's, guns. That's a whole new uh, thing. That, yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. I kind of forgot because I kind of pushed it out of my mind. But You're the 3D printer, man, dude. Defense distributed. Yeah. 3D printing. Um, people talk about 3D printing a firearm. Yeah. You can get 3D models and try to print them, but it's not as easy as people think to do. Like making an AR-15 receiver on, out of uh, – like filament, could you print one? Yes. Is it going to be dimensionally correct? Probably not. Is it going to work? Mm, you might be able to get it to work, but you're probably going to get a couple rounds, maybe if that, and just shatter the thing to pieces. It's not as reliable unless you have a really high end 3D printer that you can use, like I guess for lack of a better term, engineering you know type materials or resin or something. Um, it's people think of 3D printing they use a blanket term. Most of the 3D printers that people are using at home use filament, like on spools. It's, uh, yeah, this is like just an example, you know, filament that comes on a roll. Um, it's different. You know, there's a lot of things to consider that people don't know about, about it, but it's not as reliable as one would think. You can't just you can't just download a file, click the print button, boom, you know, oh, look, there's an AR-15 receiver. No, it's a challenge to print stuff properly even on this style printer sometimes. There's a lot if, of you could, if you could reliably print functional AR-15 receivers for the barrier to entry that you, Rick, and most people have gotten into it, mm -hmm. like, no, and I'm not, you know, not to disrespect your equipment or whatever, but yeah. you didn't pay tens of thousands of dollars for your setup. No, I didn't. Not that, not that I mean, you paid some money, but I mean, if for a grand you could print as many, you know, AR receivers as you wanted to print, mm -hmm. I would need to buy another house because that's something to be stacked full of AR receivers. Right, First, you know, there you'd open my garage and you'd just be like one thousand two, one thousand three, <laughs> one thousand four. Like that's not how this works. And people, I'm 
I, I have some very few liberal friends, but I do have a few, and I, I'm trying to explain to them this on the Facebook feeds. It just makes me want to yeah, yeah. It just makes me want to jam my face through a wall because I'm like, dude, all you're really doing is keeping my buddy Rick from being able to print me an Ambi Ambi selector. <laughs> you're not really keeping him from making a fucking rifle. Oh, hey, our buddy Joe Gizzy's out there, by the way. Joseph. Um, sorry, I got distracted there. Yeah. He's going out camping tomorrow or something. He said, um, but yeah, glad to have him on here, which, uh, yeah, we got some cool stuff coming up. Me and him and Brandon, um, uh, in the future too. Um, anyway, sorry. So yeah, 3D printing and ghost guns. Yeah, there's a whole thing. What is, I haven't caught really up to date on all of it, except for seeing the clip, the same clip of the same guy, you know, um, I don't know if he's congressman, senator, or whatever. I'm not really. I haven't paid that close attention. Just bitching about. Hey, you're gonna find this in airports and 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 theaters and blah 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 blah. It's untraceable and undetectable. And what yeah, happened? Bullshit. What happened? If you watch CNN, here's what happened. A nine year old came up with a statistic about the printing. No, no, no. Putin and Trump and Kim Jong Putin. got in a room. And they decided that they were going to allow Kent and Rick and Corey to make ghost guns. So they yeah. said, they said, just those three dudes right there. We don't trust Brandon because he knows how to hack our shit. But the rest <laughs> of them, them boys can make their ghost guns. And then, you know, Alyssa Milano somehow got involved. Corey, that's for you because there's Alyssa Milano is spearheading the campaign to stop this. I'm so glad the girl from Bewitched has decided to turn off a ghost gun. Because she was all hocusy pocusy with her pointy nipples and shit on the TV show, and she was trying to fucking you know make people into like foxes and shit on TV, and now she wants. Dude, us she to is not down. Madonna with pointy nipples, man. That's like you ever so watch that stupid now. show Bewitched oh or what? What which show was Alyssa Milano on? Yeah, I know what show you're talking about. It had the, like the three sisters or whatever. Yeah, and they're like hocus yeah. pocus. No, is it? No, it wasn't Hocus Pocus. Oh, I remember the one where I mean, she was like a Enchanted. teenager. Uh, yeah, had that other, the older Italian guy was his name. Hold on, the old show, Char not Charles in Charge, but uh, shoot, whatever it was. Yeah. Anyway, I digress. Let's see. Um, charm. That's what charm. it's called. Charm. charm. Sorry, I, I remember watching this. I had to look it up because it was going to drive me nuts. Yeah, I just did the same thing. Yeah, charmed. She was running around charmed with her pointy nipples, going hocusy pocusy, oh lattery. I'm not even going to comment on nipples, but whatever. Well, they were pointy. Anyway, my okay, point I'm, is, have you been checking that out? She, my elves ears. She had no problem whatsoever using her assault fingers to make people disappear and shit. Now, all, now all of a sudden, I want my buddy to be able to print me out a freaking safety lever, and the world's gonna goddamn catch fire. Where did the safety lever thing come from? Because all of a sudden you're on this topic, and I didn't even know anything about it. Because I broke a safety lever, and I was gonna ask you to print me one, and I forgot to ask you. You have a file for one? Yeah, Defense Distributor does. Do your printer three D thing and go click the button and send me one. That's you how easy to click it. and find it. Yeah, I don't yeah. have to look for it. That's exactly Damn. well. That's how easy people think it is. You can just go and click e yeah. Control so you, P you and you'll have 40 of them. Safety selector is going to be okay? Uh, no. Probably not. It's probably going to break again. All Dude. I'm asking is hit Control P and make me a rifle. It should be that easy. Control P and print a rifle. But it's not I, that I easy. I do want to you print an AR-15. And when I say that, I want to print a, a model AR-15. Like, do like each piece at a time. Like, there was a guy who find a file. I made a file for a barrel. And the barrel is like two or three separate pieces because you can't print it all at one length, you know? And you can kind of like epoxy it together. So I want to make like a 3D printed model of AR, like full size. That'd be kind of neat. But it's a challenge to get stuff to print out nicely. And you got, you got some things because of the intricacy of the shapes, they have like support material and you have to like clean them up. It takes a lot of friggin' time. And it's like, yeah, whatever, you know, forget this. But there's a lot of cool things you can do with it, you know? Um, I say we 3D print as much of a rifle as we can 3D print, and we play rock, paper, scissors for who has to pull the trigger first. Rock, paper, rifle? Rock, paper, scissors, rifle. And, and eventually what's going to happen is somebody's going to keep losing rock, paper, scissors because they're going to run out of fucking fingers to use. And they're going to run out of ammo? And, and then, you know, it's going to be over. 
<laughs> Eddie, I don't well, know. One. People just kill me with this crap. They're, oh my God, they're going to make ghost guns. The world's going to catch on fire. Yeah, Every they school. all going to go in the airports. It's going to be undetectable. Yeah. They're going to get on the planes. It's going to be like the ceramic Glock 7. That you was know what? Stupid movie. How many people I know have gotten on planes with different things? Like one guy got on a plane with a, with a full full mag. You know, <laughs> one, one guy got through, I know personally, got through with a, a nine millimeter round, live round in his pocket. You know, it, it's basically a smoke show. It's a bunch of BS. Um, it's, it, you know, yeah, it's, it, I guess it, it gives people more of a, sen- a false sense of security than what it really is. Security theater. It's, yeah, security theory. So, I mean, realistically, I mean, if somebody really wanted to do something detrimental, they're going to be able to do it because. You know, um, you can have multiple people bringing multiple components in individually and get through that security system. It's it, it can happen. I believe it can. Yeah. Yeah. I think we should just fucking rip the warning labels off everything and let God sort it out. I'm I'm tired. Yeah. Of Archie Bunky Bunker style. Fuck you it. Know, oh, how to keep everybody safe on the plane, keep them away from terrorists. Well, when you get on the plane as you board, everybody gets a gun. Yeah. You get on the gun when you get off. You collect all the guns. No one's gonna fucking do shit because everybody dies. Yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe we should test that theory. I'm not sure. Because <laughs> yeah. you know, maybe there's one nut job that just says, "Ah, fuck it, I'm taking everybody with me." But yeah, I don't, I don't know, man. I just some of these, some of these things, the way the way they report this stuff just fucking breaks my skull in half when they talk about. When they when they talk about how bad it's all of a sudden gonna be, I'm like, dude, you could buy an eighty percent lower and have it shipped to you, and it's no different. What do you? Somebody's texted you about how off track we are and how terrible the show went. No, about this is look at look at you flipping people off. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Sometimes I'm a badass. No, not really. You are. No. If anybody's ever seen Rick in his blue jacket. With his what? Like leather, in his jean jacket. His I don't have a jean jacket. Not with the cigarette, with the cigarettes rolled up smoke. in his shirt sleeve. No, no. And no. the slick back hair. He is a badass. My hair is slick back. I'm bald. I don't have hair. I lost all my hair, man. I started losing my hair in my twenties. How sad is that? Yeah, my forehead keeps getting bigger than myself. Dude, shave it. Go for it. Mm, I don't know. Still hold on to him. We could do a live stream of that on the show. Corey, you got a send, pop culture. <laughs> He's gonna say send Corey over. Yeah. Corey, you got a pop culture segment for us? What's going on in the world yeah. of TV Bopper music? Uh, <laughs> Miley Cyrus. Hey, Corey uh, Mines wants to know, brother. Well, apparently Miley Cyrus and uh, Liam Hemsworth are having some trouble. Uh, Justin Bieber's now engaged to whatever that Donald Trump impersonator's daughter is. Uh, Wait, is this that, shit yeah. for real? Do you actually know this shit? Is that real? He's yeah. just making it up. Oh, okay. I, well, Justin Bieber's actually engaged to Alec Baldwin's daughter. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, that, that happened a couple of weeks ago. It was like big headlines. It only dated for like a couple months or something. I don't know. Now it is these days, you know. You, you bang one out one night, and then you're married to her the next. You have a kid nine months later. It's easy. Oh, my God. We should ask Kim Kardashian how that worked out with Chris Humphreys after she divorced him in 72 days of marriage. I don't 72. Know. He knows the these people? 72. What are their names? Yeah, how does he know? He knows all this stuff. You know, hey, man, all, don't need this stuff. All I'm, I'm saying is if there's a producer from TMZ watching this right now, get at my boy Corebeard on Instagram. Hit him up. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> What did your shirt say? Unbroken? Is that what it says? Yeah. I'm broken? Unbroken. Unbroken. <laughs> it's only because awesome. I had to glue the pieces of shit back together in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. I, I can relate to that. I'm totally. Right. Uh, I mean, you know, it is what it is. What can hey, I say? So I, got a, I got a beard question for you, too. Okay. So I'm thinking about growing my beard out more, right? Okay. What do you guys recommend? You, Corey, I know because you're kind of like the bearded expert a little bit on that. Yeah. And also Kent. Um, so, like, when when is the appropriate time to use, like, the, what is it, beard butter or oils or whatever crap you're supposed to put in your beard? Um, Kent's shaking what, his head, like, don't do that. 
oils you want to use like all the time. I mean, when do you start though? And what any, length is it appropriate? Any, uh, let me see what. Like right now, you could you could use some like right now, just because there's you know there's enough there. Probably five five to eight drops or so. Just you know roll it in your hands and then just make sure it gets into the skin and then like if it gets long enough um you know we're talking like gandalf the gray style you know you want to put some balm in it to where the wind's not picking it up and you know it's blowing in the wind so the balm is for the wind factor so it doesn't blow around it's Keeps basically it's, it's basically like hair paste you know like gel or something like that okay. it's got beeswax in it to get get it to hold to style it and stay where it needs to be I need to get some beer oil to start out with. I have a, I have a three part recipe for beer growth. I I've, I've got one too, but there's little You're, kids that watch this channel probably, and it's not appropriate. No, mine's I screw it. Mine's gonna be inappropriate. In all seriousness, <laughs> Corey's the beard expert. I don't do shit with my beard, but here's my here's my beard growing formula. You ready for this? It takes a lot of it takes a lot of a lot of alcohol, a lot of vagina, and a lot of late night sleeps. I, I was literally gonna say whiskey. Titties and ammo. That's it. Okay. If you, I mean powder. Yeah, black powder would work. Yeah. No, just if you shoot enough, <laughs> see enough titties, and drink enough whiskey, your beard will naturally sprout. I don't know. Mine's sprouting pretty good. Yeah, you're good. What, what? And, yeah. yeah, I don't drink beer, and I and I, I shoot guns. I mean, you know. Yeah. Okay, so. You don't you drink you don't drink beer? No, I don't. You drink liquor, don't you? Yeah, sometimes, but not all that, not all that often. No, I don't mean often. I just mean like for an episode or so. <laughs> yeah. Every, every four hundredth episode? No, I just we're only we're only in the hundred and something episodes, by the way. Just, uh, yeah. Yeah, oh four for an episode, like four times four, yeah, four yeah. beers an episode. No, I, I drink like the weird stuff. Like I'm, I gotta get some Mike's lemonade again in my life. I haven't had that in a while. Oh my god, dude's talking about tactical minivans and Mike's hard lemonade. <laughs> sounds, like, okay. sounds like uh, hey, we're gonna relive. Uh, day, by the way, I'll back this story up. I forgot to mention this earlier. Um, his beard just receded. Did you see that? It went back into his face. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have a Brad Pitt moment from Mr. So, and Mrs. Smith here. Oh God! Someone asked me. He said, "So if you you have a minivan and you don't, it's more of a statement, I guess. You have a minivan, but you don't have kids." I'm like, "Yeah, I also like to haul my guns around in it." <laughs> so I don't know. It's not that cool, I guess. I thought it was kind of cool. No comments out from the peanut gallery out on YouTube. I guess we're losing everybody. They're just they they got scared about minivans and beards. What what was that about? You have a minivan, but you don't have kids. Yeah, there's a comment that like, so you have a minivan, but you don't have kids. What? Okay, so I mean, I guess while we're on the topic, what drove you to the minivan buying choice? Why did you buy? I one? I didn't buy it. So here, here, here's how this happened. I have my truck, I, I, my big, huge diesel truck, and my Corvette. My mother was buying a new van, and this is her old van that she bought new. And I'm like, don't trade it in because they're not going to give you anything for it because they, they literally were going to lowball her and give her like nothing for it. Cause it's got over a hundred thousand miles on it, but it's very clean. It's, it's been, I've taken care of the thing since new and what I haven't taken care of the shop I used to work for t has taken care of since then. So I'm like, I want it. Cause it's like, it's going to be better on fuel. I'll take it. And because I can haul stuff in it, you know, like, and have it enclosed unlike my truck where I've got limited space inside of it. So that's pretty much why I decided to go with, you know, getting that van. What color is it? Red. Yeah, that's right. You said, yeah. yeah. Hey it, man, it blends in with all the other soccer mom bands pretty much, and that's getting older because it's no six. You do you, boo boo. If, if that's what you like, go for it. <laughs> all we can see is like the top of your head. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm all leaning back. Yeah, <laughs> I forgot. I'm, I'm guessing the angle of your camera's purpose is probably like guns and or no, I'm sorry. There's probably beer bottles and cans all over the floor, isn't there? <laughs> yeah. Well, hold on here. Let's see. No, I can't angle my camera because it's on a laptop, but there's one, two, only two guns, a mantis, a couple beer bottles, plus the ones I threw away. I was counting all the guns in my bedroom. 
Oh, I know it gets bad. I'm, I'm some. I, I'm over. I think I'm over fifteen in guns in my bedroom. And that's not even my gun room. No, I know. I've kind of. I've. Kind of, I guess I've kind of went pretty crazy in my hobby. Yeah, we that's had, not like uh, a good term to use, but excessive. We had a. No, we had, you can't be excessive with that. We had a friend come over. We had friends come over. A, a guy and a girl and two like a six year old and a four year old. And my wife, I, my wife and I are like, all right, like, we'll just have our carry guns on our body and that'll be it. It took me a good, like, three trips to the safe to sanitize things. To get, <laughs> sanitize? To get, it, to get it to where, like, a toddler wasn't going to come running up the steps and go, look, daddy, is this a rifle? And be like, oh, shit. Like, <laughs> you know. Oh, so, man. Nothing like, I don't leave shit like laying yeah, around. are pretty shit. articulate. <clears throat> yeah. Um, that's like me like you know i i live upstairs in in an apartment you know one bedroom one bath i think uh nine nine hundred square feet maybe you know i've got a little uh safe i bought at target you know is that a safe or is it actually just a gun cabinet no it's a, no it's an actual safe you know i i've uh I put all my tax information and stuff in there, you know, a couple pistols and all my, you know, gold and silver coins and stuff that, uh, that I invest in and, and stuff. And I mean, most know of my, to find all the good shit. <laughs> oh, you ain't getting in there. <laughs> I've got too, I've got too, too much ammo and, and too many eyes on every entrance and exit out of this place. Uh, but anyway, uh, I, I mean, I don't, I have my stuff laying around. I mean, I don't have any kids yet and small space. You know, if I want to have them hidden, I, I hide them. They sell, normally, they sell normally I'll just pick, Target? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Normally, I'll just pick up my Lucille bat that I had made for me, and I'll just go up after them after that. Normally, you know, getting cuts just is about as bad as getting shot. At least what I would think anyway. Getting what? Did you say tased? Cut. 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 Seal bat. Yeah, yeah you know, sorry. Wrapped in barbed wire. You know, I'm going to put a inch hole in your head from a metal spike on a barbed wire bat. Yeah. yeah. That would suck. Yeah. Good thing I have that next to my bed. <laughs> right. I'm going to have an assault Lucille. It's going to be like attached to my AR, like a grenade launcher, and I'm just going to like. Run out of bullets. I'm gonna swing it. I actually got a chance to shoot a grenade launcher. And that was fun. That would be pretty fun. But it had a paintball. It wasn't actually but, a grenade. But that so was the anticlimactic part of it. Have you shot a cat launcher? Not yet. <laughs> we do need to. We do need to set that up, don't we? Rick, please hit Control P on the cat launcher file, so that you it's know. It's gonna be a really small one, though. It's only gonna print out, but like you know, like. Like the size of a, uh, I don't know, whatever. So we'll print one. It's gonna be a desktop model. Let's put it'll it be, that way. It's it'll be more a, of a mouse launcher. launcher. So we'll so print like one off. off. What's that? Your, we'll print one off for like your tactical, you know, dad van. Tactical so dad you can like van? you can like have it on the roof of your van and just like launch cats out off of it. You um, know. Have you ever seen what's that movie? Is it called Jackal or something like that with Bruce Willis? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, if you ever seen this movie, that 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 is the epitome of the tactical van. Like in that movie, for those who haven't seen this, he his evil character takes like a minivan, mounts a like um a basically a machine gun on like a tripod <laughs> that's computerized with like where he can control it from a laptop, and he parks it on the street to assassinate some public figure or something. And so when he starts shooting it, it just shoots out right through the glass windows and just you know. And um, there was one point in time where he's using this minivan and he's using it like a getaway or something like that. And he is, paints it. He tests how quickly he can change the color of the van. So he um, takes like, I don't know, some of paint or something that he coats the van with. And then he goes to pressure wash it, pressure washes it all off and everything. And it's like, yeah, minivan just blends into the scenery, you know. So it's like, check out the movie. You you see what I'm talking about. It's called Rick, Jackal. Rick's rolling around like from like CVS to Target to Rite Aid, like I'm the fucking Jackal Man. I'm no, the Jackal Man, I'm the Jackal. No, not <laughs> at all. I'm Batman. 
Oh, clearly. <laughs> Batman in a minivan. They have a they have a car that's uh that's in production. I think that it comes out this year or it's next year. Jackal? No, it's called the no, it's I think the, the names of it, it's actually called the tank or something like that. And it's like full on like a tactical car. Bulletproof, uh armor. Yeah. I'm all for it. I can't think of I'm checking Google for the tank or some shit like tank. that. Hold on. The tank or some shit like that. Yeah, seriously. So, like, what else was there? Oh, that reminds me. Like, years back, do you guys remember that whole rampage this guy did with his bulldozer? Where he made his own armor on it and everything? He yeah, my he uncle committed Phil. suicide. <laughs> well, yeah, he committed suicide in the end. Like, they couldn't even get inside the thing. They Like, they had to, like, cut it all apart to get a, get inside of it. Um, that's just crazy. The guy built this whole tank. Is he was at his last straw? The whole government basically destroyed his whole livelihood and business, and he tried every single avenue he could, and finally just went berserk and built this thing and just basically took out everybody's houses and everything. It was pretty, you know, pretty interesting story. But it just reminded me of that. Like I know. just sent, uh, I just sent the link over in our. Oh group shit! Yeah, group that's a long, long link, man. What's on? Okay, whatever. I know we'll probably wrap things up pretty pretty soon. It's like fuck you, man. I didn't build the link. I just clicked it. <laughs> it got uh, that thing's a that thing's legit. The tank. Choose you your now. tank. Are right, you want to screen share this or do you want me to? Or? Yeah, you screen share it because I for some reason Google sucks on my end to do screen shares. That's why I haven't been doing them. Yeah, standby. Open. What should I stand by? New stand window. By. Oh, Stay holy crap. It looks like an FJ Cruiser on steroids. Stand by your face. Hang on. Hang on. Yeah, it's a pretty sweet little Hold thing. Down. Man. Starting at 295000 I buy Military it. tank edition. Otherwise, you, you get computer tank you at one On my screen. Where's my lottery winnings? I need to find those. Starting at 295 and three zeros. Yes, sir. There we go. Sorry. Scroll back up because I, I didn't have it on your screen. Those that want to see this. That's a cool topic. Speaking of tactical vehicles. Dude, there's mm -hmm. your tactical vehicle. That's Here, what I need for the apocalypse Let, right there. Let's configure I mean, one of these bitches. Here, I'm going I'm to run through this. So we're going to go with, oh, fuck see, it, military edition. Yeah, go balls out. Right? Yeah, we're going, we're going the whole way here. So base price, two ninety five and some zeros. IEDs won't blow me up. You yeah. six point four <laughs> liter, five hundred horsepower V eight. Uh, yeah, that should do it. Nice. Uh, wheel color. We're gonna go black. I was losing my shit earlier when I was talking to you guys in the shower. Armor yeah, piercing whoa, whoa, rounds. Whoa. whoa, internet. He was talking to some of us while he was in the shower. None of us were looking at the video. And sending we us pictures. No video. Sending us pictures of his bald head. Seriously, like I'm, yeah, and whatever else. Uh, six point four five hundred. Now we're going seven oh seven on this motherfucker. We're going all the way. Next, off road extreme. Yup. Next. R1 brake? Yeah, I want the R1 brakes. What kind of poor motherfucker doesn't want R1 brakes? Leather seats, yup. We're going to make Trump's limousine look like a Girl Scout. Oh, do you the, what do you call it? The Beast? This is like the Beast Junior. Smaller. <laughs> I'm going with red stitching. Heated seats? Fuck yeah, we need heated seats. I mean, who doesn't need heated seats? So what if we're like the apocalypse, like under the Arctic Ocean or something? I mean, eleven inch Apple, yep. Side cameras, all the cameras, yep. Uh, ultimate sound system, fucking. Wonder what my payment's gonna be on this motherfucker. Twenty eight hundred a month. How many kidneys can you afford? <laughs> Battery trickle charger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 175 bucks yes sir i can go to well, auto so like they take a battery tender and they put it in some tactical gear reserve yours let's say <laughs> wow three hundred and sixty-seven thousand dollars. make yeah. a deposit this is where i don't click any further you can put that 1100 bucks you just spent towards your gun on that as far as my wife knows they're all one black pistol shut up <laughs> Yeah, we done. 
Eh. So there we go. Only three hundred thirty-three thousand dollars for that son bitch. I buy it. Yeah. Hey, eleven hundred dollars to have this year gun totally ATEI'd out. Doug Holloway. Yeah, I'm excited. We're gonna put a dot on there. We're gonna put some serrations <clears throat> on there. We're gonna put some stippling on there. And in the end. Yeah. In the end, what? I don't know. In the end, I'm gonna be able to run a 0.18 split instead of a 0.22 split on a build drill. Shut up. I don't know. It's gonna make <laughs> me feel better. No, I love the dot. The truth is I love the dot. i I'm all about the dot. Um and custom milling is the best way to get a secured dot on your handgun. Buying a prefab slide is not as precise as having that dot milled for that gun. That's what Steve Fisher told me on the primary and secondary, so I'm buying one. Yeah, I, I um, <clears throat> I still didn't want to get a Trujicon RMR for sure on that 19. Just like the same. I, I, I just, you know, just want to have more of that experience. I haven't had that yet. And Glock MOS sucks. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. I don't need that slide. I've got an LTD combat slide that's set up for the RMR. Why does the Glock MOS suck? I'm yeah, just curious. Uh, thank you for asking. The Glock MOS sucks for two reasons. Number one, because it sits higher than it has to, so your sight co-witness can get a little funky, um, for one. And for two, because I've got a video out about my experience with it where I get hit in the face with my own red dot because it wouldn't stay on my 19 to save my life. Um, it's all about it, – so it's not the most optimal thing. What you need to do if you got a Glock MOS – is you got to make sure you have the right mounting screws for your dot and your plate and your gun. They will tell you what screws to use in the Glock package, and that's a load of shit. So if you're trusting the screws that came with your MOS package, you may or may not, in fact, suffer from vortex to face syndrome. Oh, <laughs> vortex to face. <laughs> Just telling you. That's no, this, is, this is a firsthand experience, it sounds like. Yes, sir. Um, and, and, and it's just not as, if you look at it, so, so I've got a, now I'm actually handling a loaded gun. So I've got a, uh, plate right here and you see this little, I don't know if you can see, can you see the silver mm -hmm. underneath the dot? Yeah, that's your plate. That, no, sir. This is not Glock MOS. That is a <coughs> weatherproofing plate sold by Suarez International for that. So on your Trujicon RMR, <laughs> you're sitting. I missed it. Yeah, because it's sitting like actually on the slide. Correct. And then you, ha you have to have the weather plate to keep the battery. Correct. To battery, keep battery secured. Yeah. Correct. <laughs> so that's, now. So is that that's type one, right? Because type two, they fixed it. Correct. So now, though, if you go with a type one RMR on a Glock MOS, you have to have a mounting plate and a weatherproofing plate and a dot all sitting on the top of your slide so you got tolerance stacking going on so now your mount height yeah. gets all fucked up and it's just it's it's a soup sandwich and it doesn't do what you want it to do That's and so it just I, I i'm done with it now fn on the other hand just what is soup a sandwich is that like it means it means it makes no sense <laughs> soup like a hot dog is not a sandwich yeah exactly fn though <laughs> the fn 509 tactical just came out and they've got a really a really neat way to secure a they've got a factory mount solution that kind of solves some of these problems. Some duct tape and some band-aids. No, no, no. They've got a better plate. Jesus, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> hey, only my only my my uh I knew that would get you. Never mind. That's what I go by at work. My technicians call me that. Oh my goodness. Yeah, but anyway, so not a fan of the MOS. All right, for like like Brandon, if you're gonna run a USPSA gun or whatever, like do your shit. Like that's probably you're probably just fine. But understand that your zero is gonna drift, and every once in a while you're gonna have to fuck with it. And mm. every you know, no, a lot of people in the USPSA do the uh, saddle saddle uh, systems where you know the dot stays in that one space and it's connected to the frame. I've never seen any Glocks like that, but is that something that is a possibility for like race gunners or no? Hell yeah. Absolutely. I would 
I, I mean, I'm not like that race gunning is not my world, but yeah, but for a, for a carry gun, that's a little bit ridiculous, but yeah, for a yeah. race setup. Sure. No, I, do they make one they for make a, a Glock specifically? Yeah. I, I could swear I've seen one. Um, and they also make the, um, Oh, what's the company makes the dovetail mount that replaces your rear sight. I've seen those on make, some other stuff. And I mean, I just yeah, don't trust that. On those either. Yeah, they make a dovetail now, mount. No, Strike Industries has one that goes on the back plate too. That like mounts in there somehow, and has like a screw or something going through the back plate, and has like a little Picatinny rail that goes on top. But you you robot on me there. I don't. I didn't hear what you said. Uh, I was saying like uh, Strike Industries has one that is like the back plate for this for the slide that kind of comes up around the back like an L shape sort of and uh, gives a Picatinny rail for you to mount to. Oh yeah, it replaces it like it replaces your striker cover. Yes, that's what I'm trying yes. to say. Yes. No, I, I've seen that too. I mean, look, like again, if you're the way like this gun at least came from Suarez, drilled and I'm gonna call it drilled and tapped for lack of a better word, milled for an RMR specifically to mount the screws directly through the ceiling plate to the gun. This was the best prefab factory option I could find for this. Um Zev makes guns, Brownells, Brownells makes slides. There's a bunch of companies that make pre-milled slides that you can find your own RMR and skip the MLS mounting plate. Um, and, you know, m &P has their core system. A bunch of companies have this figured out. It's just a matter of for a fighting gun. And I know I, I all my stuff mm -hmm. is all my stuff is that way. And that's my mantra and my shit and whatever. But, you know, for a fighting gun, I don't want to have to worry about zero drift. And I don't want to have to worry about battery connectivity issues. And I don't want to have to worry about water getting in there. So to me, you know, having Doug mill out the slide, he's going to sell me the RMR, take that optic out of that box, Mike and caliper and everything else, that specific thing, and mill my gun for that optic, not for an RMR, for that. Mm -hmm. You know, he's going to serial number match my RMR to my slide, basically, is what we're <clears throat> talking about. Right. Um, and his stuff has been doing <clears throat> to have such tight tolerances that when a guy decides he's going to replace that RMR, he can't make it work on that. And he has to send it back to Doug to make it work again. If that tells you what we're talking about for tolerance wise. So that's where I'm at. Well, and every tight tolerance that you're talking about, every other little gap, any other way is, you know, free play when that slides going back and forth, back and forth hundreds yep. of thousands of times. And I mean, if you, I mean, I, I, can, I definitely see where you're coming from. The, the absolute best way is going to be to directly mill it just for that and not have any adapter plates or whatever. So Yeah, yeah. but if you're, you know, if, if your dot loses zero and it's going to cost you a match and you don't want to pay yeah. $1,100, well, then go for it, bro. Like, uh, you'd be perfectly fine. I've got it set up. I've got the 40 MOS, the 10 millimeter set up with an rmr for a hunting package you know i'm not running my 10 millimeter long slide tens of thousands of repetitions that gun's gonna shoot 400 rounds a year maybe you know and i'm gonna zero it right before i hunt with it just to be certain so should be all right that's just my my little so, thing we'll probably wrap things up for tonight but i was gonna mention yeah. one more la last thing too i think i'm gonna be shooting um the first like not really first. I did a, I did a steel challenge type match, but like first rimfire two gun match, I think coming up, uh, I think it's a week from this Saturday. Um, so I'm, that's why I kind of put this thing together. I want to, hopefully this week I'll get out to the range, a local range to be able to kind of zero in this, this, uh, I want to keep wanting to say red dot. It's a green dot. Um, and also do the one on the 10 22 as well and get that all dialed in and ready to go. Um, and then get some practice out at the outdoor range too, to kind of, kind of get used to doing some multiple targets and stuff with it. I don't expect to do very well at this match. I just planning on just going for fun, you know, more than there anything. There you go. Yeah. I mean, hey man, banging those twenty twos fast is fun, yeah. man. It's cheap. So that's know. what I'm looking at. Well it's, the pistol's not so cheap, but the ammo's cheap. Yeah. yeah. In the grand scheme of things, yeah, you know, you 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 kinda of same thing. If you're gonna be you know the pistol pistol cost might be pretty close to the other other like running a nine millimeter or whatever you know larger rim uh, center fire cartridge. But um, I'm excited to try this out. I, I haven't gotten to shoot this thing yet since I did all the upgrades to it. 
you know, oh, wow. trigger. So <laughs> it's it's right out, fresh out of the box. And I shot it 50 rounds through it. That's it before I did any of the work to it. And I uh, just completed it. Um, and, you know, again, I'm just testing out this red dot or this green dot to see how it works. Um, it might be something I might even just, you know, not even run at all. I don't know. We did you buy the green dot so it would match the barrel color? <laughs> yes. No, <laughs> actually, <laughs> no, actually, I was looking at it. I'm like, ah, oh, this company only has the green dot like this available. Maybe they have red dot somewhere, but Amazon didn't have it listed. So I'm like, well, then I was like, well, because the red, the other, uh, other optic I have from ADE is on my 1022. It's a red dot. Um, so I, I kind of wanted them to be the same, but I couldn't see that they had a red dot like this available on this on Amazon, like I said. Um, so I went with this, I'm like, ah, it's green. It'll match the pistol, matches the whole tandem cross colors. There's a lot of the upgrades on here from tandem cross. Um, oh, I did order another thumb rest for it too. I'll add this into it. Like, oh, the um, gas pedal thing or yeah, oh. Stri Stripling custom guns has one and I ordered it from them. Um, it basically sits up here. I, th yeah. I think it replaces the front pin on it, and it has a little thumb rest. Cause like when you, the cool thing about the safety selector that's on here, I got away from the original safety selector, so I don't have the, the BS on this side that was in the way for me personally. Um, and it's a, it's tandem cross is the uh, cornerstone safety. So when the safety's on, you know my hands on here, I kind of have to like lift my thumb up over it, turn it off. But then once I push down on it, it becomes a thumb rest. Mm -hmm. And it feels very nice. The ledge right there is perfect. So if my other hand on here, there's nothing to set this on. But when I get that little, um, the Stripling Custom Guns one, I'll be able to rest it on there. It'd be perfect. It, it's just like it's it's all the options I want to put on this thing at this point. I don't know what else I want to do. Maybe is that going to come in before your match? I hope so. Because yeah. it's like I still got part of this week and then a whole week afterwards. Oh, and I should yeah. be able to install it pretty quickly. I think it basically, if I if I understand correctly, you know, what I love about this pistol too is how quickly it comes apart. As you know, um, I believe that this is just a threaded in, you know, Phillips head, you know, cap screw kind of so to speak. So mm -hmm. I think you can just unthread it, and I think it just goes on. I'll see once I get it for sure. Again, I love this about this pistol because it just you know clicks together, pull it apart. I'm glad I went with this this one. The only thing I wish they did was make it in the pretty blue that I like, but the green the green's kind of growing on me. The only thing is in pictures, and even like on this video, it looks like it's brown or like a bronze, but it's like a, it is a green, believe it or not. You know? Nah, it looks like the the pea soup green that Linda Blair threw up in the Exorcist, yeah. Man, you with the movie references all the time. Bro, you are a cinephile. Yeah, cinephobia, you know, cinephile, yeah, is the right word. Your mother sucks cocks in hell. So, yeah. Yep. Oh, my God, dude. What? what? Shit, scary movie reference there. <laughs> All kinds of craziness. I think I have this just a hair off, too. I might have to tighten this up a little bit. Rex um, over here trying to have his first AD on live television. That's right. <laughs> I am. It's not an AD. You just said AD. It's oh, fuck. AD. I did. Shit. You just fucked right. up. You fucked up your own joke. <laughs> I know. So anyway, on that note, we'll wrap things up tonight. Again, I want to thank the sponsors, uh, Eggleston Munitions, Applied Arsenal Finishes and Gunworks, The Range at 355, and um, Spin to Precision. Check them out. SpinToPrecision.com for all your barrel needs for uh, AR-15s and Glocks. Oh, my. So, uh, Thank you guys for hanging out with us. Kent, I see it's way past your bedtime. I see you bumping your, eye, rubbing your eyes there, so thanks for joining us. Yeah, man, always good to be here. Yep, thanks, thanks for playing guys. along. Yep, it was fun times. And uh, Corey, thanks again. No more references on the... Always. Yeah. Oh, man. References <laughs> on what? you got to be specific. I mean, which one? Oh, Miley Cyrus, Liam Hemsworth. I mean, what? <laughs> I can do Celine Dion, you know, and my heart it. will always go on. I mean, whatever. Oh my God! Do you guys ever see Bat Dad? By the way. Oh my God, Ben! Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He's like, that's inappropriate. <laughs> yeah. We need like a Bat Dad emoji just for Corey. Just that's I know. Yes. Like I, I love the, I love the one he did where he got, they got her or their daughter the pillowcase, and it's like <laughs> she, 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 she said <laughs> Shafid. He's like, what's her name again? I don't remember his daughter's name is. Uh, Sienna. Yeah, he's like, Sienna, where is your pillowcase? 
I threw it in the trash. Why are you throw in the trash? Or whoever he says, I forget. He didn't say Shatheen, it said shithead. Yeah. Well, that's what you are. <laughs> <laughs> Again, Brandon, thanks for joining us tonight, too. Yeah. Out. So we'll wrap things up. So anybody, yeah, thanks again, everybody out there watching. Forever, the last stragglers are actually tuned into this live with us. Um, Guns and Glory's out there. Uh, what's up? We must have jumped in a little bit late. Thanks for joining us. John Brown Productions, um, our buddy Joe, Craig Island, Midnight, Midnight Range, um, and Vanessa, whatever, Vanessa Kitty or something that her name is, and um, probably forgetting someone else. But um, all you guys out there watching, you know, every time we do this, appreciate it. Appreciate your support. Go check out the Amazon link below the video. No cost to you. Make any purchases. Um, you know, it helps, uh, helps fund the channel and so forth. And uh, as always, till next time, have fun shooting.